Hello everybody and welcome to another Python 3 tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is re or regular expressions. So the idea of regular expressions is regular expressions it's its own little programming language of its own kind of like SQL or SQL or whatever. Um, and the idea of, of regular expressions is to pass a string of arguments that will apply to a string of text basically. Um, so you're, let's say you have a body of text and you're trying to figure out, um, you're trying to pull some data from it. Let's say you're trying to pull, um, like in our case, what we're going to do is say we're going to, it's a paragraph and we want to pull names um, and ages from the paragraph. And we're just going to go ahead and assume that names and ages are the only, like names are be the only capitalized things and ages will be the only numbers. So the idea is you pass data through or you pass like a, a um, some arguments basically through using regular expressions saying I'm only looking for let's say numbers um, two you know we're looking for a two to three digit numbers I guess with ages it would be one to three digit numbers um, and then names we're looking for any string where the first letter is capitalized and then all the way to the end um, and then if there's a space then that's the end of it and whatever so the idea of regular expressions is that another thing that we're going to use regular expressions for uh, very quickly is to parse uh, paragraph data away from HTML data in uh, on websites and stuff. So if you recall the last vi uh, last video, we visited some websites and we were able to get through their little filters for robots. Um, but very quickly, we were <clears throat> seeing another problem is that we can't uh, figure out. You know, we we're trying all we really interested in is paragraph text, or at least you know in theory. Um, that's all we're interested in. But we're having a hard time separating all of that uh, via the program. We could go through ourselves, but it would take a long time. So anyways, uh, the idea of in, in use of regular expressions is um, they're extremely useful. It's definitely a good idea to learn them. They're kind of um, intimidating at first, uh, but they, they do get easier, I promise. So. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing uh, is going to be, I'm just going to throw out some identifiers for you guys. Um, and these are all things that, uh, you don't have to memorize these for now. Uh, I will put, first of all, <clears throat> probably copy and paste this into the description, but also the whole sample code I've been putting on my sample code on pythonprogramming.net. So you can also get all of the sample code there as well. So don't worry about typing this out with me. Just kind of, if you want to type it out, if you feel like that helps you better, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, just kind of listen and follow along. Um, it's not necessary that you type this. So backslash will, if you remember, it's an escaped character. And when it comes to regular expressions, the backslash is actually more of a notification that, hey, this is a character. <laughs> Pay attention. Uh, so anyway, a little bit different than normal. But anyway, so with regular expressions, a backslash lowercase d is going to be any number. So this is how you, you begin to notify that, hey, we're looking for a number. And then you'll, you'll start putting in a description, but more on that in a, in a little bit. Uh, the next thing we're going to have is a backslash capital D. This is going to be anything but a number. And then you would specify some more parameters, but we'll get there. <clears throat> backslash S is going to be a space. Backslash capital S, anything but a space. Okay. Uh, then you're going to have backslash W, this is any uh, character, backslash capital W, anything, you guessed it, but a character. <laughs> uh, then we're going to have uh, a period. Now period, uh, you don't have to do a backslash or anything for it, so just keep in mind that because of the period, if you... Uh, if you want to designate, like with regular expressions, you can all, not only can you search for things like this, like any number, any character, or space, uh, you can search for specific letters. And the way that you would search for a specific letter or a specific character is just to type that letter, right? Uh, so with a period, you can search as well for a, a period. Or say you're looking for decimal points, you can do that. But you actually have to use backslash period. So a little funky there. I'm not, I think it's kind of silly they did it, but whatever. Um, so anyway, a period is any character except for a new line. So anything except a new line. Next, uh, we have uh, slash b. 
And the idea of slash b is to kind of make things easy for you. Oh, we weren't using uh, an equal sign, so I'm going to just do this. Uh, slash b is the white space around words. Okay, so there's a lot of regular expression that might go into coding. You know, you're looking for white space around words. So that luckily they've done it for you. Um, and then finally, just as we said, backslash period. Okay, a period. Okay. So, so I, I really don't understand. I think that these two should be flipped, but they are not. So just keep that in mind. Next up, so those are identifiers. Then we have what are known as modifiers. And our modifiers are basically like our identifiers say, hey, we're looking for any number. Then we have modifiers that say, hey, we're looking for uh, this amount of numbers or this type, or you'll get it in a moment. But basically, we're, modif we're saying any number, and then we give a description. That's like our modifiers is our description. So we'll come down here. And for modifiers, for example, you might have uh, some brackets, one and three. So remember before we were saying if we're looking for age, we're looking for an age with a digit, of, you know, maybe one digit to three digits. Um, so in this case, this is, you would say, uh, this is a description for digits, let's say, and we would say uh, we're expecting one to three of them. Okay. So for example, this would be slash D one to three. Okay. That would be we're looking for digits one to three in length, but we'll get there. Next up, we're going to say plus. Plus uh, is means match one or more. So if you put a plus by something, it will only match if there's one or more of them. You put a question mark, it's going to match uh, zero or more. Now, why might you care about this? Um, this will result in, well, never mind. Well, maybe we'll explain that later. Um, asterisk is just going to match oh I'm sorry I did this wrong let's see one or more match zero or one then match zero or more so there's a a slight difference between this and this and then also this this or this right um, why might you only want to match one um, you might only want to be finding one instance. You might not want a whole list. Uh, but anyway, we'll get more on that in a little bit. Now, the dollar sign, that's going to match the end of a string. Um, then there's a caret sign. This is matching the beginning of a string. So say you were looking for pronouns. Uh, you might not want to look for anything at the beginning of a string because everything at the beginning, like say your definition of a pronoun is a capital letter, <clears throat> then if you're looking at the beginning of the string, you would get a lot of false positives because everything at the beginning of a sentence is going to be capitalized. So then we have the bars, right? So you've got this little bar here and that matches either or. So you could say I'm looking for a digit one to three in length, uh, Oops, right? And then you could have something like this or I'm looking for a character five to six in length or something like that. Um, so that's where that bar might come into play. So it's an either or. Then we have square brackets and these just correspond to a range um, or variance. Then we have um, these, well, you've already seen the curly braces, but you can also have just a single number. So you can say five, we're expecting five of these uh, bits of data. Um, so for now, x, expecting x, whoops, x amount. Uh, then we can have um, what we did up here. That's x to y, so right, ex expecting 1 to 3, so to speak. Uh, the next one that we're going to do is, uh, they're called white. Let's make some more space. White space characters. These are characters that you may not necessarily see, um, uh, at least in code, but they exist. So you've got new n for new line. We've already covered that. Uh, backslash s for a space. Uh, backslash t for tab. 
backslash E for escape. You'll probably very rarely ever see that. Uh, backslash F, you'll rarely see this too, foreign feed. And backslash R, uh, this is a return, a carriage return. You're probably not going to see that either. These three are the, really the only ones you're ever going to really deal with. But just so you know, the others do exist, and maybe some of you actually do need them. <clears throat> now, uh, this will be a don't forget. <laughs> uh, these are the following characters. So if you recall, there's a lot of symbols here and another kind of confusing thing here. So there's a lot of special things that we have to remember. So we're just going to list them out. So a period, plus sign, asterisk, question mark, brackets, uh, dollar sign, carrot symbol, cur er, round braces, curly braces, a bar, and a backslash. Basically, if you really want to use these, you have to escape them. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Now, uh, the last thing I really want to cover, I suppose, are I don't think. Yeah, you know, we did range and variance, um, but I, I guess I should cover an example of range. Um, so generally, when you're going to see square brackets, the what you're going to see is the following. So it's going to look. Uh, well, hello, what is happening? <laughs> What's happening to me? Okay. So a range, you're going to see the following. So if you've ever looked into regular expressions, you'll probably recognize what I'm about to do. So a range might be A to Z. Okay. So you're looking here for capital A to Z. And then what you might see is like A to Z like that. And then you might also see uh, A, Z like that as a first letter. And then A to Z as a second letter um, like that. Uh, the other thing, too, you, you could see is something like, these are kind of confusing, let's say, we do, you're looking for a number, 1 to 5, uh, with the lower case, anything A to Q, followed by an uppercase, anything A to Z, okay, <laughs> so a little, a little confusing, it's possible to do that now. Personally, I rarely use code like that uh, to find what I'm looking for. Uh, just like with anything programming, there's many ways to satisfy the goal, whatever that goal happens to be. But I just want to make it obvious what that kind of means. Sometimes you're going to see regular expressions, and you're going to be like, well, I don't even understand what he's saying, and, and I took that tutorial. <laughs> so anyway, uh, moving right along. Uh, did we ever close off this massive comment? We sure did. So let's come back up here. <clears throat> we'll do that. Um, again, don't have to worry about copying this. I just kind of wanted to run through everything, give you guys kind of a get your feet wet. And now let's actually try uh, what we've learned. So now you can start coding along uh, with me. So to use regular expressions, you have to import the module as part of your standard library. And to import it, you just do import RE. Um, now let's make an example string. So we're going to say example string equals, and then we're going to make it a multi-line string. And we're going to say the following, Jessica is 15 years old, and Dan, oops, and Daniel is 27 years old. Okay. Then Edward is 97, and his grandfather, Oscar, is 102. Okay. So we have this example string. Um, and now what we want to do with this example string is we want to pull all the names and we want to pull all the ages from the string. Um, luckily in English at least we would not say 15 is Jessica. You would always say Jessica is 15, right? And then you might have a question like who is 15? Jessica. In that sense 15 would come first. But at least here uh, for our basic example age is always following the name so we can always assume that name, age, and those are the corresponding values. Um, so anyway, we're trying to pull names, ages. Also, uh, we don't have any capitalized letter or any capitalized words uh, that aren't names. So yay for us. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now what we want to do is we'll come down here, and now we're going to specify the regular expressions that will correspond to names and the regular expressions that will correspond to age. So first. We have uh, ages equals uh, read.find all. And to notify Python 2 that this is going to be a regular expression string, you use R 
then an opening uh, quotation, and we'll go ahead and close it all already. Um, and now we're going to say for ages, we know that following ages, we've got uh, two digits, two digits, three digits, but it's conceivable there might be a one digit age somewhere in there. So we know that we want to search for backslash D, so we want to search for digits, and now we want to say we want to find any digits that are one to three in length. So we use these curly braces, and we'll use uh, one comma three. Done. Now, that's the first parameter. You specify the regular expression that you're going to search for. <clears throat> now, comma, where do we want to search for this string? Well, we want to search for it in example string. Okay. Next, what we want to do is names. And names is going to equal read up find all again. And we're going to say it's a regular expression. Close that off already. And names are going to be the following. Now, remember before I did this? This is basically searching for any of those characters, a 1 to 5, an A to Q, or a capital A to Z. And you can do that. Um, and there's also there's a couple of other things that you can do. I think probably when I worded this, I probably worded it poorly. It's not 1 to 5, then A to Q, then A to Z, capital A to Z. It's any of the following. But anyway, um, so we're looking for any capital letter first. So we're going to say anything capital A to Z we're looking for first. And then we're going to look for anything capital A to Z lowercase, uh, and then asterisk. Okay, and that asterisk is basically saying we're looking for just one of these, but as many of these zero or more repetitions of those. But that's just A to Z. So as soon as we hit a white space, uh, a period, uh, comma, anything, it's going to stop parsing uh, that. So that's all we have to do. And again. Uh, on example string is where we want to apply this. So now what we can do is we can go print <clears throat> ages and print names. And let's save and run that and see what we get. Okay. So we get Jessica 15, Daniel 27, Edward 97, Oscar 102. So we get lists of this data. Uh, we could also end up putting stuffing these into a dictionary. So for each Let's say, uh, if you wanted to get fancy dancy about it, this tutorial is already pretty long anyway, so whatever. Uh, we'll, we could say, uh, for each, let's say, name, oops, whoops, each name in names, uh, let's specify age dict up here equals empty for now. For each name in names, age dict each name. Hmm. Age dict each name equals. Uh, I guess there's a couple of ways that we can do this. I think the easy. First of all, we could do index and get the index number, and then uh, go. So we could do that. Or the easier way that we can do this is we could say x equals <clears throat> zero for each name uh, in names. Age dict each name equals ages x x plus equals one that's it now we can let's see if we can print h digs and if that works out for us yeah there we go okay so then we get our dictionary and so that's our output and we can check it over here um whoops so edward not jessica's 15 daniel's 27 Oscar or Edwards 97 Oscars 102 okay so now we've populated a dictionary with this with this data right or you could have stuffed it into a database or, or whatever um, probably the superior way to do this was would, would have been actually to check the index but <laughs> what I did was fine and it's shorter so anyways um, that's gonna include just an introduction to regular expressions uh, in the end we covered a lot of the regular expression characters but we didn't cover a lot of what uh, the RE module can actually do. So the only thing that we actually use with the RE module is read.findall. There are other things that we can do with regular expressions, so we will be covering more on regular expressions. Personally, the, uh, I use some of the other ones, but read.findall is pretty much the only one I ever use. Uh, so I, that's why I covered it. I figured that maybe that's what most people want. But there are other regular expression uh, functions and so we definitely want to cover some of the other ones but now uh, I'm going to conclude this video and the next video we're going to be combining URL lib and regular expressions to parse
paragraph data from the website. So anyway, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave those below. If you have any requests for tutorials that you want me to cover in the series, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.